Hello, people of God, it's good to be with you on Wednesday and to be able to open God's Word together once again. And I want to read uh, one more time from Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Um, We might not think we needed three days to uh, figure out what's going on in this one verse, but it's rich with meaning, and I want to spend one more of our times together thinking about this verse. So once again, I'll begin the reading at verse 1 and read through verse 5 of Matthew chapter 5. This is God's own Word. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, That's the particular part of the passage I want to think about together today. Uh, The meek, they will inherit the earth. Um, We've been thinking about what meekness is, the fruit of meekness, and now we see the blessing of meekness that Jesus pronounces. The blessings of the meek are that they shall inherit the earth. That's important for us to understand because that goes against the grain of what the world might say if we say the meek will inherit the earth. Um, The world might be tempted to say, well, you know, this is a dog-eat-dog world and nice guys finish last, and if you counsel people towards meekness, Um, They're not going to survive in this world. It's dog eat dog. It's kill or be killed. It's play or be played. You know, you that's the world we live in. And and so counseling people to meekness is really counseling them to be suckers. How will you ever make your way in this world if you're meek? And I think that reveals maybe a fundamental misunderstanding of what Jesus is talking about here. Um, When Jesus says the meek will inherit the earth, um, I don't think he's basically saying that you know things will go well for you in this world if you're meek um, probably the, the opposite is true um, it won't always go well for the meek in this world um, but I think we can get a better understanding of what Jesus is after if we if we tweak our translation of this verse just slightly to say blessed are the meek for they, for they shall inherit the land blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the land because that immediately brings us back to the Old Testament land promises um, of an inheritance of the promised land. Um, that's what God's word, for example, says in Psalm 37, verses 10 and 11. In just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. Um, it, it's likely here that Jesus is referring back to Psalm 37. The meek shall inherit the land. And if we understand it that way, the meek inheriting the land and delighting themselves in abundant peace, um, what is that really a reminder of? It's a reminder of what was promised um, under the the old covenant, those promises of security in the land, uh, that you would have the land as your possession and that you would possess it in peace. It was a promised land that was a picture of the heavenly reality that was to come. And so I think we can see in the light of that psalm and in the light of what Jesus says here, we can see what he's really driving at. Um, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land, the true promised land, of which the Canaan promised land was only a picture. What is the true land that God's people will, will inherit and possess? It's the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwells. And so the meek might not make the kind of people who seem like they will inherit this earth. Um, but maybe that's because they're not the kind of people that are meant to inherit this earth. They're meant to inherit the new heavens and the new earth that are to come when Christ returns in glory. Um, and we can see that's the blessing truly of the meek, is that they will inherit the land. They will inherit the promised new heavens and new earth in which peace abounds um, and which and where righteousness dwells. Um, and we can look to that, that attaining of the promise as we see it in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? He described himself as meek. That's what he means in, uh, that's what he says in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me all you who are heavy, late, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Uh, Jesus' meekness could never be equated with a lack of boldness, with a lack of strength. 
right? He was tender with those who needed tenderness. Um, he was a faithful shepherd, and yet he was tough in the midst of hostility and persecution. Um, he was tough to stand up to those who were doing wrong. We can think of him turning money changers out of the temple or exposing the false teaching and hypocritical lives of the Pharisees. He showed his toughness and his boldness in, in the cross, um, in his whole life of suffering, but especially on the cross. He showed his toughness, um, that he was willing to concern himself only for his father's good, only for those things that his father desired, and let that drive him in humility and boldness. He lived his life as a life of suffering with tenderness and also with toughness. And what was, re what was the result for our Lord Jesus Christ? What was the, the consequence of his meekness? Well, it ended in the promised blessedness because he inherited the earth. Um, at his resurrection, he was crowned king. Uh, that, that really is his coronation moment uh, when he is crowned as king, uh, rising from the dead. And what did God say of his son all the way back in Psalm 2? He said in verse 8, Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. Uh, that's what God said to his crowned king in Psalm 2 verse 8. And what does Jesus tell his disciples in Matthew 28, 18? Jesus came to them and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He has inherited the earth. He has inherited the land. He is the king of the promised place. Um, he has inherited that. Um, and that inheritance he shares with his disciples, with those who follow after him in meekness. Um, and that's the blessing that we hold out for ourselves, not that we'll inherit great things in this world. We may, God may choose to give us many things and then we'll be thankful for the prosperity we enjoy in this life. Uh, but we know that this life is not what we are aiming at. This world is not what we are aiming at. We are aiming at another land, another earth, a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Um, and that, that earth is our inheritance even now. Um, we shall inherit the earth. It's not a promise that entirely waits for us, uh, but a promise that we enjoy even now. Think of what Peter said in, for, in those glorious beginning words of 1 Peter 1, 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Um, that, ha that inheritance is already ours. It's already been given. It's already been kept. Um, it's waiting for us when we arrive in glory, but it's ours even now. Uh, that heavenly land is ours, who love the Lord and the blessed and the meek will experience the blessedness of coming to God um, of inheriting that promised land of which the old promised land was only a shadowy picture um, a place of protection and provision where God is present with his people uh, that's the hope that is held out to the meek um, and so while people might say meekness won't get you anywhere in this world um, we can respond as Christians and say, I'm not looking to get anywhere in this world. I'm looking to get to the world to come. And by God's grace, because he's worked the meekness of my Savior in me, I can know that I will be blessed, and I will one day inherit that new heavens and that new earth in which righteousness dwells and where peace abounds. Uh, may Christ come quickly and give us that place of peace. Uh, but until then, may we continue to conduct ourselves as citizens of that place in all meekness. Let's pray and ask that God would bless us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we're so thankful once again to be able to come before you in prayer and meditate on the great blessings that are ours in Christ. Uh, we know, Lord, that in our own meekness, we could never inherit the earth, that it comes simply as a blessing from your hand. 
And we thank you, Lord, for the great promise of that blessing. We thank you for the meekness that our Lord Jesus Christ showed, that he was tender when he needed to be tender and tough when he needed to be tough. But that meekness showed forth in his life and in his conduct with others. And we thank you that we can look to him and see how he has inherited the land, how he has taken possession and lordship over the heavens and the earth, and that just as he rules in this heavens and earth, he will rule in the new heaven and new earth to come. And he promises that we will inherit that land that is far greater than the promised land pictured in the old covenant. So, Lord, we thank you for that inheritance. We thank you for that blessing. We pray that we might conduct ourselves with meekness. And when it uh, doesn't go well for us in this world, when we are taken advantage of or looked down on for our meekness, might we remember the blessing that's ours in Christ. Might we remember the blessing of, that awaits us, that we will inherit that new heavens and that new earth where righteousness dwells and peace abounds. Lord, bring that kingdom quickly, we pray, and sustain us as we try to live with meekness in a hostile world um, until that day when we take possession of that inheritance that's even now being kept in heaven for us. Thank you, Lord, for this great blessedness. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Forgive us our sins and provide us all that we need in him, we pray, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, people of God, once again, it's been good to be with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again.